What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. Today's episode is going to be brought to you by Mystery Ranch, built for the mission. Have you ever been rocking a Mystery Ranch Fireline pack? Well, that sucks to be you, dog, because everything probably hurts, especially your shoulders, back, hips, feet, knees, all that jazz. Yeah, that sucks. So get the best in the game and go over to www.mysteryranch.com where you can find all of your load bearing essentials, even outside of wildland firefighting packs. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So if you want to go peel a trophy elk off the side of the hill or you want to go for a camping trip, um, go hike the PCT. If you want to go fly fishing, if you want to go do whatever, I don't know, get a pack for your uh, everyday carry essentials. Well, look no further than Mystery Ranch. But while you're over there, you better check out the Backbone series and check out some of the stories that are coming out of that whole uh, Backbone series. It is pretty freaking awesome. And they're giving back to the boots on the ground in a huge way. Why do I say this? Well, it just so happens to be that the Mystery Ranch Backbone series gives you the opportunity to submit your story and get a thousand dollar grant, a thousand dollar scholarship rather, to uh, advance your professional career. So if you want to, I don't know, go to EMT class or school, or if you want to go take that S class that your district's not going to be paying for, well, this is your opportunity. A thousand bucks is on the line. So head over to www.mysteryranch.com and check out the Backbone series and all of their other load-bearing essentials. The Anchor Point Podcast is also going to be caffeinated by none other than our premier coffee sponsor, and that's going to be Hotshot Brewery. It's kick-ass coffee for kick-ass cause, and a portion of the proceeds will always go back to the Wildland Firefighter Foundation. Yeah, so if you're looking for some good coffee or some of the tools of the trade to get your morning started off right, or a whole slew of wildland firefighter-themed apparel, look no further than Hotshot Brewing. You can go over there and check it out and get all your tools of the trade and help support a good cause at the same time. Go over to www.hotshotbrewing.com and check out all of the tools of the trade to get your morning to start off right and all of the apparel and some kick-ass coffee for a kick-ass cause. Go check them out. And last but not least, the Anchor Point Podcast is, well, they're not sponsored by, they're not brought to you by, but it is one of those close relationships I have with Bethany over there at the American Wildfire Experience. And uh, yeah, I just want to show her some love for as long as I possibly can because I believe in her cause and I believe in her mission and she's got some rad stuff going on. And if you don't know what the American Wildfire Experience is, well, they house the Smoky Generation. And I know for a fact, a lot of people out there have seen that rolling around. It's pretty freaking awesome. What it is, is basically a digital storytelling pl- platform uh, telling the story of wildland fire. There's quite literally, there's there has to be like over 250 of these stories out there now, but it's preserving the legacy of the uh, folks in the field and the story of wildland fire. And some of these stories even date back to the 1940s. It's pretty freaking bitching. So if you want a little history lesson or if you want to sign up for the Smoky Generation grant program, if you got a compelling story and you're telling the story of wildland fire through the lens of a camera, a video camera or a still camera, through a blog, through some animations. There was this one dude out there who made uh, We Move Mountains with Spoons and it's freaking kick-ass and they're a Smoky Generation grant recipient. Yeah, sky's the limit. Tell the story. It's freaking awesome. Anyways, if you want to find out more, go over to www.wildfireexperience.org and you can check it all out. Once again, www.wildfireexperience.org. Bethany, you have a kick-ass organization over there. Keep it up. The views and opinions of this podcast do not reflect the views and opinions of the United States government, the Department of the Interior, the Department of Defense, the Department of Agriculture, the United States Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management, National Park Service, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, or any private, municipal, county, or state firefighting organization, any law enforcement agency, any medical provider, or any contractor employed by any federal agency. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Anchor Point Podcast. I hope everybody's doing well, and I hope that everybody is still uh, got their head in the game. It's been slow. Yeah. But anyways, it might pick up here pretty soon. So buckle up. Anyways, uh, so I don't know about everybody who's listening to this, but there is like some serious shit going on with PPE. It hasn't been like changed in like 30 freaking years. And it's got some like pretty antiquated rules to live by, like the NFPA 1977 committee. And that's not a year. That is like 
kind of like an NRS code or a, a code for whatever that's filed under anyways. Anyways, so PPE hasn't really changed in the past 30 years. And we can all agree that there's some uh, inconsistencies with the manufacturing, especially when it comes to the difference between men and women, right? So this is a one size fits all kind of game, but there's actually a company out there that's uh, trying to change the game and make better fit stuff specifically for men and for women. And I think they're going to be changing the game here when it comes to PPE, not only with the cuts and the materials and all that stuff. I mean, the materials aren't going to change much because they're required by this NFPA 1977 thing, but at least the cuts. Right. And they're actually petitioning and working behind the scenes with the NFPA to change some of those regulations that they have to live by. So showing that amount of dedication to get the right fitting PPE into the game, that's pretty damn cool. So we're going to talk all about, well, tech and PPE, talk about entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about since uh, 2015, these folks have been around trying to change the game. And this company is none other than a company called Green Buffalo. We're going to have the founders on the show today by the names of Summer and Karina. And they are deeply passionate about the subject. The reason being why is because while well, Karina is a wife of a wildland firefighter for over 20 years, she's had a kind of a front row seat to the wildland fire industry and she wants to change the game. So Summer also is a uh, 15 year veteran of the apparel design industry. And uh, she is deeply passionate about it as well because, well, she gives a shit and she cares about the community. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my two good friends, Summer and Karina from Green Buffalo. Welcome to the Anchor Point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Anchor Point Podcast. Today on the show, I have got Karina and Summer from Green Buffalo. And if uh, you wear PPE, well, I'm pretty sure 99, well, 100% of you wear some sort of PPE out in the field. Well, these are the people to talk to you, talk to, especially if uh, you're a woman. Take it away. Summer, how you doing? Great. Thanks so much for having us today. A uh, pleasure to have you. Karina, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Glad to be here. I'm glad you uh, have joined us on the show. And uh, yeah, let's talk all about PPE and how you guys are changing the game for uh, PPE. I, 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 there's not a lot of options out there for women stuff that fits actually and right. <laughs> it's, no. you're just like going to town on this and trying to change that so i appreciate the hell out of that first off but uh tell us about yourselves uh go ahead karina so uh just a little background you know both summer and i have our educational backgrounds in apparel design and merchandising and you know, I wanted to still continue along this path, but it just didn't feel fulfilling to make a dress or make children clothes. The market's so saturated. And um, in 2015, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with that. And I do something completely different from my day job. And so, you know, doing a little soul searching and I told my husband, I just can't figure it out. I don't know what to do. And he said, Hey, you know, my uniform really is not the greatest. And so summer happens to live not very far from where I do. And we were both talking about this and she was kind of feeling the same way. And so we came together to take a further look at, um, wildland PPE. And so obviously in the beginning we're like, Oh yeah, let's just, do this. We'll do it for men. Obviously my husband, you know, I'll get him in something. And as we were going down this path, just really started to, I mean, it was very abundantly clear that women were made wearing gear made for men. And so we quickly switched gears from looking at men's garments to women's garments. And I will say now eight years in, we went into it. Um, I won't say Ignorant, um, but a little bit ignorant, a little <laughs> bit blind, didn't realize very all blind. of the, uh, very blind, um, you know, just a lot of rule regulations and policy that we were unaware of. And we thought, oh, we can knock this out, have something really great for basically, um, you know, wildland firefighters are elite athletes in a sense. And so we thought, oh, we can easily go into the outdoor industry. Tell you what, we should have started outdoor industry and then gone into wildland. 
Um, so that was a learning curve, but you know, it was, it's been very interesting. We've learned a lot. We're still learning, um, a lot of policy, a lot of politics, very interesting. Um, so anyway, just going from there and getting everything figured out five years of R and D and then teaching a product. And, you know, we've had men buy our stuff, you know, the stuff that's made specifically for women, just because it's, it fits them better than what's currently out there. So just to hear that, right. The women's stuff fits men better even. Yes. Yeah, did I hear that correctly? Some men do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it like, uh, like, I don't know, some of the other competitors out there and the way they design some of these pants, I mean, it's, it's like a box, it's boxy. It's like basically wearing a, a, a kite or a sail at some, for some people. I mean, I'm a small dude. So sometimes the problem lies with, especially like the thighs when they're mm-hmm. built for someone with bigger thighs. I'm only like, I'm only five, eight on a good day. <laughs> so I, mean, I only weigh like a buck. <laughs> the heaviest I've ever been is 175. So I'm a small dude. So when you get into these like pants, bigger, like built for bigger guys, bigger thighs, bigger stuff, like all around, uh, it, it, it's not good because it like rubs together. Then you start chafing problems and you got to do some, like, I've actually taken pairs of, uh, greens, even like forest service issued greens to uh tailors to have them like altered at points right so yeah Yeah. and that's what we're hearing um from everybody because we did a lot of surveys and um and testing in the market to find out what everybody needed and what the issues were and that's one thing that we noticed that we were finding the manufacturers that were producing these things but they didn't even have designers on staff to be able to adjust the garment as they needed. They just came up with a pattern or they got the pattern from somewhere and just started producing it and didn't really do any market research or studying sizing. And my background is a technical apparel designer. So I'm like a sizing specialist. It's what I do. And so being able to to size the people that we have in the market and find out what they need to be able to give that better fit. Because you're right, in men and women, there's uh, all the chafing and bleeding. People are having to go to the doctor because of all this type of stuff. And it's just terrible that their uniforms are having to work a- are working against them so hard. And it's already such a difficult field anyway. So if as long as you have something that can work with you and not against you, that makes your job so much easier. Hundred percent, couldn't agree with you more. And uh, yeah, it's a, it, the whole technical and outdoors apparel. Um, I mean, you look at different manufacturers. Um, a, a brand that I'm a fan of is a company called Cool. Uh, they're I think they're out of mm-hmm. South, uh, was that Salt Lake City? Or anyways, for like just wearing around, and uh, <laughs> they fit a lot tighter than some other and any pretty much throw a, a, a dart at a board of names of technical or outdoor apparel they fit a lot different than everything else same thing with this company over here that company over there there's just there's no like there's never a one size fits all solution because we're all humans we're all di- built different men and women are built different all that stuff so right. to come up with something in a ppe context and put it out there it, i think it's i think that's huge Yeah. And I think that nobody just has really paid attention to this market very much. And when we were getting into the market, that's what we kept hearing is that um, some people would say that we working within the Forest Service. Well, you know, we've heard from a lot of people, but nobody really stays to actually do anything because of the rules and regulations are so difficult to work with and work around and to try to change to implement something better that most people just stop doing it and they move on to something else, maybe making outdoor instead of helping this underserved community that really needs help. A broke one at that too. That's the hard part is, uh, we, you both know people in fire. You're, you're married to people in fire. It's like, you know how much money we make. It's not a lot. So it, it's mm-hmm. really hard to find something that's no, not $700 for a pair of like Nomex and something that's affordable that fits well. Yeah. Buy once, cry once. I get it. But it's having something that's affordable and also fits and will last. That's yeah. You're speaking my language. Yeah. 
and, and that's huge and that's that are very hard to come by because um the fabric is very, very expensive you know if we were just in the outdoor industry um easy super easy to do much cheaper but unfortunately you know for us in green buffalo we don't get to dictate that and the choices on the market are slim so it's few and far between and they're all at a much higher price point so the $700 pair of pants, um, that's just not, it's not doable, but, um, I don't know how we can level the playing field per se. Um, just trying to figure that out. We've talked a lot about fabric development and, um, that just goes into way more than <laughs> what we have time for right now, but, um, there's gotta be, there's gotta be a, a better solution. I feel like. Yeah. And, and to further that point, I mean, you're not paying necessarily for the pants themselves, right? With that price tag and with the, some of the more expensive options, I'm, I'm, I'm loving your stuff right now. I mean, it's very uh, reasonably, it's affordably priced. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a couple hundred bucks, but it's all PPE is going to be way more expensive than this, most likely from other manufacturers. But the thing is, is that the, there's a reason why this stuff costs so much. And it's because of proprietary fabrics. These are all patented. Yep. These are all trademarked. These are all proprietary fabrics and you must use them. And that's dictated by NFPA standards. Right. And mm -hmm. so, and you mentioned something a minute ago about um, you would take your stuff and get it tailored. And um, a lot of people would do that as well, but sometimes they don't realize that even the threads, um, there are specific threads, specific buttons, specific hook and loop, you know, like all of that type of stuff has to meet these exact standards to pass, to be, to meet these safety standards, um, to be safe to use on the field that a lot of people will get their stuff altered and they're not using like the Nomex threads mm -hmm. or, um, you know, just the, the pair of airmids that are supposed to be used. So then that's putting them at risk and then their, um, their uniform becomes not as safe at that point. Oh yeah. And, uh, speaking and bringing it back to when I was taking my stuff down to a tailor to have it altered, I had to source my own thread. I had to, and even down to like the stitching requirements, there's like regulations down to like how many, what is it? How many stitches per inch is stitch called per inch. stitch per inch. Yeah. And that's all in the NFPA mm -hmm. standards. It's crazy. Yeah. So since we're kind of diving off the deep end here and just going into NFPA talk, let's talk about NFPA and how complicated it is. And like, let's talk about like the manufacturing process and like all the regulations and rules and how those are set up and like how you have to navigate that stuff. Cause that stuff is fascinating to me. Mm. Karina, do you want to take that? Um, I mean, yeah. It, and I think we can kind of split it up, but it is. Yeah everything is very specific. And so, you know, every single component of the garment, and then also the, the manufacturer, the manufacturer has got to have a certain certification. Um, and just, it's very limited, um, in terms of somebody like on our scale and trying to do some of this because, we can't meet those manufacturers minimums and you know we're a small business and we're trying to introduce our gardens to the market and we don't have the working capital to put out thousands and thousands for inventory and so that's where the nfpa for us is a little bit hindering because every single thing is dictated by the standard now we'll say um, the standard is, you know, we understand why it has to be there. There needs to be something in place, but also it's so prohibitive that, um, it, it really does hurt some of the things that can be done. I do believe, and I'm sure Summer's got lots to say on, on that piece of it, but, um, you know, it's just. The, the NFPA is one very hard to navigate. We've been very fortunate to have had a mentor, um, welcome us into everything and kind of help us navigate the system. And if we didn't have him, 
we would still probably be plugging away by a much slower pace. And I know we feel like we move at a snail's pace at times, but having that individual believe what we're doing and what we want to do and helping us to implement some of this. And, you know, we didn't approach the committee and say what you're doing is wrong. We just wanted to help and provide options. And that's the thing, you know, we kind of talked about this earlier. Um, I, I think before we were recording, but just like clothing is hard and everybody's shape and size differs. And, you know, you may be sitting in a room with five other guys and you all may not buy your clothes at the same place. And so our biggest thing is let's have some options and create that for individuals because everybody we've spoken with does have some sort of issue with their uniform. We're not saying we can make it perfect for everybody, but we can be another option. And so with that, we did have to step outside of the box with the NFPA because everything is so limited and all of everything, every component that we use is NFPA certified. Our sizing does not fall within that. And, you know, we kind of talked about where things fit and don't fit. And again, that just creates an option. So we did have to step outside of the box. And right now, with the way the committee is moving, it sounds like they're eager for change. It does take a while to make these changes. And so we decided we couldn't go ahead and put something out there and build to this specific specification because it would be doing firefighters a disservice. And so if we were going to do it, um, we, we wanted to do it in a way that we're still working with the committee, but we're providing something that we feel is a better fit for not, again, not every individual, but, um, a lot of individuals, and especially when women are wearing uniforms made for men, that is a huge disservice to them. 100%. And yeah, and that's another thing too. You mentioned the small business thing too. It, it's, you're already paying for the expensive fabrics that are all proprietary. You have to abide by these standards. It's expensive. It's cost prohibitive for you. And it's cost prohibited for the person that's going to be putting them on at the end of the day. And it sucks, but that's just the way it has to be right now. So what I'm bringing this into is like, do you have, do you two have the opportunity to maybe push the direction of some of these standards and kind of open up like some more availability for different types of materials, maybe some different standards, like the sizing thing. That seems like it's like so such low hanging fruit. Like, why is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> I can understand you have need like minimum it air is. clearance for like insulation between you and your skin and the fabric. Right. But right. come on, let's be real with this. <laughs> and that's, that's yeah. the big thing is, you know, when we first went to the committee, I think it was 2018 and we presented to the committee, we got invited to come and present. And one of the things they told us is one, you're only going to have about 10 minutes. So get up there, say what you need to say. and be done. Like we were up there for almost an hour because there were so many questions and we opened this can of worms and they may not have loved everything that we were saying. But one thing that we were told was that it's a, an issue that comes up at every single meeting, but nobody's brought them a solution. And we were thanked by a committee member that didn't necessarily agree with what we were saying, but appreciated that we came and presented this information um, and gave them a solution. And quite honestly, with some of our competitors, I think they're manufacturing on such a, a large scale. It is not lucrative for them to make all these changes in such a small, if you're thinking about women's gear, it's a smaller percentage. And so when they do their manufacturing and you make the slight change for a handful and, you know, compared to what they're making, um, it's not, it doesn't make sense for them to change all their machines and do something a little bit different to pump out these garments. And so we understand what all of that entails, but that's why we decided we would do what we could and just work with smaller manufacturers. Um, and S Summers had to beg and plead for much smaller minimum order quantities for us just so we can get something out there. We can get it in the marketplace and, and make sure that what we're providing is, you know, something that we feel good about putting out there. And I will say that we've, 
we did plenty of prototyping. We did wear trials. We did focus groups. We did all kinds of things. My husband has several pairs of our prototypes. And I told him basically, go beat the hell out of these and tell us how they feel, um, how they hold up. And then that way we get to see firsthand how they wash and wear. And I will say that seeing a lot of the PPE that's come in and out of our household over the last 23 years, um, I'm very pleased to say that I'm, I'm happy with the results, you know, and you do have to take into consideration you're wearing a lot of these individuals are wearing these same pair of pants for at least six months out of the year, every day. You know, some sometimes they're wearing them for 14 to 21 days at a time, and then they're getting them in to be laundered. And so, again, I just told them, I said, do everything you can in these. Um, I, and I, I want I want you to literally try to destroy them because we need to know. And also, how do you feel and do you have any any issues with the fit? And if so, we want to know. So we want to know the good things. We want to know the bad things. And that's that goes for anybody that buys our garments. We've been very transparent and told them, hey, let us know. I mean, it's great to know if you're saying, I love this. This fits better than anything I've ever had. Awesome. Tell us what you don't like, too, because that's where we can improve and and move forward with with our designs. Oh, absolutely. And that whole feedback thing, too, it, it's there's only one way you're going to make yourself better as a company, as a product, as whatever, you know, as a human, even is it's constructive mm-hmm. feedback. Like I used to be into B2C uh, marketing and my bosses would come to me and uh, I was pretty high up in the chain of command. There I was a director of marketing at a previous company. And uh, whenever we'd see it, like scour the internet for like looking for shitty reviews. And I'm like, why are you guys getting upset about this? Why are you upset about this? This is a golden opportunity. If you get a shitty review, that's only giving you room for improvement. If it's someone's really, truly pissed off about something, well, make it right. You have an opportunity there to make it right, not only with them, but for further people down the road, right? Also, right. exactly. yeah, the, I mean, even with like uh, trying to break it, like what you're talking about there, like, hey, go out and thrash these pants, just destroy them. Now you can have the data to back up your improvements. That's that's a huge exactly. thing. How the hell are you going to get better unless you have those criticisms or that feedback, or even positive or negative? You know. And I think that that's what's exactly. put us in a really good spot now. That um, even though we wish we were be able to um, launch our product earlier than we were able to, um, we did have about five years of research and development before we actually launched something out. And so in the past few years, since we've had something on market, we've been able to make these tweaks to some a product that had already been really tested and, and worn and, you know, totally destroyed, you know, out in the field or they're trying to destroy it. And so, um, so we've had a lot of amazing feedback to be able to get to where we are now. So even though it has been longer than we hoped, um, I think we're in a really good spot to be able to offer something incredible that the end user really needs. And, um, and I think it's really, um, important to point out that I think a lot of people don't realize that even the sizing is dictated in the NFPA standards because we, we've kind of talked around that a, a little bit that all the Nomex and the fabrics and threads and all that ha- is dictated as well, which makes total sense. You know, you want to have safe fabrics out there, but um, the sizing is dictated in this standard, which it's not in most other standards, or it's very, it's very open uh, to interpretation and other standards, and it's not in this one. And so I think that's important uh, for people to realize that why there's been just another reason that there's been such a delay in getting really great fitting items is because if you want to have it certified by the NFPA, then, um, then you have to follow that sizing, which isn't good sizing. And um, we've been fortunate to be able to partner with um, NC State and FSU the past several years, and they're top tier research universities. And we've been collaborating with them on testing in different areas and specifically um, women in wildland and women in fire to come up with a best sizing and best fit. And um, we've got another project with them now that we're working on and just really excited to have all of this at our fingertips that, that nobody else has access to now. You guys give a shit. 
that's what it boils down to. You give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Cause this, I mean, we, we do. I, well, I get it though. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that like to disparage anybody else out there in the manufacturing. I mean, there's plenty of good companies and stuff like that, but when you have a small, almost a boutique manufacturing process where you can really dial in and like focus on a small, uh, com- a smaller community, I think your data is going to be your data into your product is going to be a little bit better. And, uh, it, yeah, like I said, I mean, economy and volume definitely plays into the effect. I mean, I get it. If you're having the stuff mass manufactured to, you know, pump out so much uh, PPE per year for X amount of firefighters. Well, I mean, yeah, you're going to have to make some, some sacrifices and it sucks. Right. That's where you have the, uh, the ability to pivot. You have that corporate agility, if you will. And I hate using corporate because you're small <laughs> business, but you know what I mean? You have that agility to pivot and change things rapidly. Right. Which a lot of these big right. And that, that it, is a that is a benefit that we have. Yeah. It although going through all of the protocol. So in terms of the size chart, you know, I did just take a look here. And in total, there are roughly 20 total measurements that they are giving very specific measurements um, of of what they want for these items. And Summer, again, as our technical designer and really honing in on all of those, it is, it does create um, restrictions on everything. And also a lot of things that have been discussed in the years past at meetings is innovation. And, you know, fabric manufacturers are able to take advantage of technology and they're looking closer at the fabrics and trying to create these fabrics that are have more breathability and you know are more comfortable to wear for longer days and there's been nothing really put into the sizing and so if you have these really great fabrics but you still have poor fit um you're not you're still going to have an uncomfortable garment to be wearing and so that's something that you know, like Summer was saying, partnering with Florida State University and North Carolina State University is really beneficial for us. And um, one thing even better is they've approached us, you know, they, we were like, oh, we want to work with these, these top tier universities and having them approach us and ask us about things um, really does make us feel like subject matter experts, because, you know, it, it, some days it's just like, oh, we're just putting shit out there. And people are like, well, who are you? You're the, you're the new kids on the block. And, um, cool. Great. But, um, you know, we, we do have backgrounds in this and we do have knowledge. So between both of our skill sets and our, our college degrees and, you know, my husband being in fire for so long and knowing this community and anybody that's in fire realizes it's a really tight knit close community. And it seems like it's very, very large, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a very small community. And and so people know, and, um, you know, this is about them. It's not about us. And that's, that's our biggest thing is why we're always looking to improve because Summer and I don't have to wear these every day for 16 hours at a time. And to be completely honest, I put our stuff on and I immediately want to take it off. Um, (laughs) You know, but, but that's not my job. That's not my job. But the goal is to provide individuals. Again, it's, it's about them. And if we don't listen to feedback and if we don't present this to committees and bring it to the attention to other individuals, then, um, we're just sitting here doing, doing nothing. So in a way, you know, this has turned into a much bigger thing than we thought it would be than just making garments and putting them out there. It's actually, um, we had become advocates. And when we had these focus groups, um, we did have multiple individuals tell us, you know, thanks for just listening and at least trying. And if it doesn't go, at least we knew somebody tried. And we appreciate that. And, and at that point in time for us, that was enough. Um, obviously, we couldn't stop there. But, you know, to have one individual in particular tell us, you know, I was on a shot crew. And as many people know, it's a 20-person crew. She was the only female. Showed up to work, 19 other individuals, all male. And she said, even if they would have given me just an inkling of something 
to feel more like I was a part of the group. And if it would have been, here's a uniform that actually fits for you, made for you and not made for me. She said, I would have felt so much better, you know, and she's very strong willed woman and did amazing, but also it's very intimidating. And that's something that I don't think is thought about much in this culture because it is male dominated. That a lot of these men don't stop to think if I showed up to a 20 person crew and I was the only male and there were 19 women and they told me to put on a uniform that was made for a woman, how would that make me feel? It'd probably suck. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I hate to break it to you, but there's a significant significant difference in biology, just like build shape size between men and women. And I will 100% say that till the end of my days. And right. if I were to wear women's specific clothing, well, guess what? It's going to suck. I'm not going to be able to have my mobility that I need. If, <laughs> like, the PPE wise, like I'm not going to have the mobility that I need. I'm not going to be able to have the breathability in the right places. I'm not, it's right. a, totally different. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally right. different, right? Yes. Yeah. But I think that's another thing too, is like you mentioned something right there uh, that was, you're, you're heavily involved in community. I mean, you have a, both of you have a vested interest in this. Like you said, your husband was a, uh, is a wildland firefighter and summer. You, I believe you said your son is a wildland firefighter as well. Um, no, I just, I have a lot of family and um, it's mostly in structure fire that my family's in. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but a lot of them have um, need wooey type of stuff. Yeah. So we're being able to, to help with that aspect as well. Yeah. And also, uh, I was actually at the Rip and Lips event uh, when that happened. Uh, oh. This is going to be recorded. This is recorded, what, three days after the event, but it's mm-hmm. going to be released a little bit later. So when I was at the uh, Rip and Lips event, I noticed that you're supporting the community and supporting the Wildland Firefighter Foundation by donating some uh, auction items there, too. So you get it. Right. You get it. A lot of uh, folks out there, they kind of just look past that. They, they look past the community component of what it means to be a wildland firefighter, PPE provider, a boot provider, a X, Y, and Z brass, nozzles, hose, whatever, everything. So kudos to you because it's, it gets lost, especially when you get too big. Right. And and I think that that, that is another benefit of us kind of being this little boutique brand now, you know, hopefully we will, we will grow. We are introducing men's because like we said earlier, we are having men's buy our men buy our women's uniforms because they're fitting them better than the current stuff on the market for men. And so seeing that men also need a better fitting uniform, we obviously had to approach that as well. And, um, and just, just being able to talk with the people at all the different conventions and stuff that we go to and the different things that we donate to as well. Um, uh, these people are badasses, you know, and these women are badasses and they've been wearing men's uniforms. (laughs) And, and and doing this job, you know, with ill-fitting stuff and not complaining, they're just out there doing it because they didn't have any options. And so being able to um, to offer something to them so they can perform their job better is, is just been awesome. Yeah. And you got to look good doing it, right? There's nothing like a good <laughs> fitting suit on a guy and there's nothing like a good fitting dress on a woman, right? Come on, let's, let's, right. I, we I, can incorporate yeah, that into I mean, our professional clothing. Okay. We can. <laughs> Well, that's the big thing is, you know, you all travel um, nationally, some internationally, and you are representing a federal agency. You're representing the United States and our army and Navy, any armed forces do not show up. Um, You know, military doesn't show up and they look frumpy. And they, you know, and, and we have gotten slammed for this because we're not saying... Um, you need to be wearing X, Y, and Z and look a certain way, but you do feel better if you look good and you feel comfortable. And also if you look professional, and I'm go. sorry, some of these photos that I see floating around the internet, this agency and some of the uniforms, they don't look professional. And, and it's across the board from somebody that's um, out digging line. But then also if you're giving, um, you know, if you're talking to the media and you're talking to the community and if there's a fire, those individuals that are up in front of people talking, they're wearing, they're throwing on a yellow. Um, you know, they're having these press conferences and 
you are representing yourself in an agency. And so we really did in the beginning when we said we were going to, we wanted to help to redesign, come up with something different. Um, we got scoffed at a lot and were told, oh, you want to make women's asses look better on the line. No, I'm sorry, buddy. That's not the point of this. And um, just because our backgrounds are in apparel design and merchandising, um, that that's not our goal. Again, this is not about us and it's not about making something that it's not, but you have got to have a uniform that moves with you and doesn't fight against you. And, you know, across the board, men and women, when they tell us, well, I have to, my crotch hangs down so low down to my knees and I have to hike my pants up because if you don't, you step over a log or, right under you know, you're going up a steep, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just like ripping out your crotch. That's super great. So, um, that, that's not the goal. And I think that's, what's being misunderstood is what we are trying to do is, is not that at all, but also if, if, you know, Fine, it's a certain mindset, but the people that get it and that like it, they 100% get it. And so that's, again, that's just the goal to get these individuals in something that will move with them and just create something that's more comfortable because it's already an uncomfortable job to, oh. to do. Oh, hundred percent. And that's the whole thing too. And I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, I was like kind of trying to allude to the fact that like, yeah a suit is a professional article of clothing or it's a, like a, a fancy thing and a dress, whether it's like a pantsuit or, you know, some sort of business uh, attire for women. Yeah. It's, it's, it's professional looking. It's also flattering looking, but it's not designed to, you know, make your ass look good as, <laughs> as you said, right. <laughs> There's a time and a place for that. If you're going to go clubbing in Vegas, yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm right. dude, I still want to look fly. I mean, I'm uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to look good. I want to look good, especially when I'm trying, like, trying to attract a mate, but there's a time and place for it. And the line is not that place. I get it. Right. However, if you look like you have professionally well-fitting attire, then you're going to command respect just to based off of your appearance. And to anybody who's going to say otherwise, I call bullshit right now. Yeah. Right. And right. plus you're, you're going to work better just for yourself. Like if, if you feel good and feel comfortable, you're going to work better. You can work harder. You can work up to the potential that you can do instead of having to fight your uniform constantly. Oh yeah. I mean, how many people have you like men and women on the line? Have you seen that are like, well, this is for the firefighters listening, but for the men and women you've seen on the line working and like, they're constantly adjusting themselves or doing like the stretch. Now we all yes. know what the stretch is. Okay. <laughs> Especially with dudes, you're only doing one thing if you're doing that thing where you lift your knee up high, okay? <laughs> yeah. And it's all because of the clothing. I mean, that's it's at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, if it's, if you're having to like hike your pants up because the crotch is too damn low to where you, if you were to like try and step over a log and you're just going to fall on your ass or blow out the crotch or you don't have, have reinforcements in the ass where uh, you're, you're, fire shelters rubbing against your uh, Nomex and it's just wearing a hole. You're just like tearing through stuff. It's like, what's the fucking point of this? This is just like, you might as well throw away. Right. Exactly. So, yeah, but I digress. Thank you for allowing me to be on my soapbox. <laughs> well, <laughs> and you did say something that, I mean, you can't tell me that there are not the majority of firefighters that are out there aren't thinking, um, that they want to look a certain way. I've seen plenty of crews that are doing things to their uniforms that are not an FPA 1977 compliant, but to stand out and, you know, adding different things or taking away certain things on their uniforms and wearing them a certain way because then they're identified as part of whatever crew or, you know, module that they're on. And so I've seen plenty of it. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, well, once it's, once it's made a spec, awesome. And then after that, it's out of our control. So that's, I think the big thing why Summer and I just thought we're not trying to go against the grain. We're trying to work with the committee as much as we can work with top tier universities, um, not to, to try and do everything the right way, but also at the same time, just, um, try to move it forward a little bit quicker. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like, you mentioned the standout thing. I mean, who throws a patch on their yellow, like a crew patch on their yellow who, mm -hmm. and let's be honest with ourselves. Like 
I've worn both uniforms for the DOI. So I've worn mm -hmm. the pickle suit for the forest service and it is not, is not <laughs> professional looking. I'm sorry, but forest service, get your shit together. There's <laughs> rules to wearing that, right? You, there's specific, very oddly specific rules for yes. wearing that uniform, right? You're not allowed to polish your brass. You're not allowed to polish your bugles. If you wear them, you're not allowed to do anything to your name tag. You're not, you're supposed to have everything like prim proper. There's measurements between the seam and your name tag. It gets crazy. But the uniform still looks like shit <laughs> at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. the pants suck. They're like a kite. The shirts, they're made for somebody who is uh, not a tactical athlete. Let's just say that. And then you have the DOI mm -hmm. side where you have the their version of the pickle suit where it's all brown. Everything is ridiculously tight. Do you know what they call the pants for the DOI? They call them stranglers. No, I <laughs> Oh no. I call them straight leaders. <laughs> oh. I've been through Academy and I've got cadre at Academy and I've had to wear both of these uniforms and it is not fun, especially when you're sitting in a classroom and you just got your ass kicked from a PT and you're trying not to fall asleep. Next thing you know, <laughs> you're just getting a, basically an atomic wedgie for your own pants. It sucks. <laughs> oh, it sucks. Ass. But yeah, I mean, it, when you're out on the line and you have to do a public appearance, say you're like a PIO or something like that, you have to wear your mm -hmm. PPE still. If you have something that commands a little bit more professionalism in your attire, I think you're going to be much more well received, especially by the public. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's true. And there's, um, and so we have seen, I think in this past probably two years, I'd say, Karina, that, um, uh, we've really seen some movement forward and getting some sizing, um, changed in the, in the NFP. PA standards here in the States. But um, also last year, uh, Canada approached us and asked if we would help them come up with sizing for their women because uh, they didn't really have any women's sizing either. They only had men's and their men's stuff is very um, ill-fitting as well. But they, they really wanted to move forward. And, um, and they uh, heard about us when they were looking around for somebody to help them out. And so they approached us. And so we were able to help uh, Canada last year come up with women's sizing to help to help move them forward. And they're in um, wear trials with with some of that sizing right now. And um, so I think that um, it, it's been a long eight years, but I, I think that there's actually some movement forward and, and it's just really exciting to be on this end of it. And that's a community element that I'm talking about too. You like, you give a shit about the community at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it seems like I was looking through a lot of the specs and like the build outs for uh, some of your PPE, some of your clothing. And you have a lot of like things that people have always wanted built into their clothes, like an IRPG pocket or like, I don't know, Velcro that doesn't like take a shit on you like three days into the assignment. Right. <laughs> um, you, you, you've taken notes from the field and you've implemented that into your uh, designs. And that's got to be greatly appreciated by the folks that are wearing it out there on the daily. I, ho I hope, hope so. so. Yeah, because yeah. we put a lot, a lot of time and surveys and, and stuff into this and lots of measurements and lots of prototypes um, that were terrible in the beginning, you know, just to work through all the kinks to, to kind of iron it out to what we needed. And so I really hope that they appreciate it. And, and we hear a lot of great feedback from that stuff. And so um, I, I really hope they like it. Here's a question for both of you. Um, have you thought about doing like mission specific, uh, stuff like say there's men and women jumpers out there. There's men and women, hell attack. There's men and women, uh, yeah. repellers. There's men and women, uh, PIOs, like the whole thing. There's even timber. I mean, the list goes on, right? Have you ever thought we about wanna it? We want to do it all. You want to do it all. So not like <laughs> we want to do it all, yeah. but we're, it's so small. We're so small right now. And mm -hmm. so to be able to have that bandwidth and hold that inventory, we, we just literally can't afford to do that in many different ways right now. But that is, that is the goal. And so I know that a lot of the times when Summer's talking to the manufacturer, um, with all of the additional design attributes that we included, she'll come back to me and she'll say, Karina, can we please take away this pocket? Can we please take away this or this? And, and I'll tell her no, because one, that's, that's less things that they have to sew. So it drives down the cost of manufacturing for us. But at the same time, it's not something that we can sacrifice because 
we figure if we're going to do it, we want to do it well. We want to knock it out of the park. And so here's a, a handful of the bells and whistles that we can give you of your creature comforts and the things that you want. And so again, we did really try to listen to the end users in terms of what they want for design attributes, what they're needing to use their uniforms for, and really put it into one. But, you know, the goal is, is as we grow, we will be able to offer something for hell attack, something for jumpers, and um, really be able to fit everybody's needs. But again, we would be able to literally carry like five units in each category (laughs) right now. And just, you know, and so it's not really feasible for us to do that. So really looking at the biggest bang for your buck and what we can do. But, you know, we just went to a conference and we had a line medic come up and say, oh my gosh, I love this. These pockets are in the totally wrong place for me. And we we said, well, we love that you love it. And if you want to, you know, we can work with you in terms of trying to find different pockets. But right now that's just not something we can do. We have a local seizures and we could take it, but it it would be a one-off. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I know there's individuals out there doing one-offs, but that's not something we're looking at doing because we can't reach as many people that way. And so just being able to provide that, but yeah, I mean, we like to do it all. (laughs) We'll see if we'll get to that point, but that's definitely on the bucket list. In all due time, right? And it sucks too. I mean, owning a business, I mean, it's like, yeah, you got to make sacrifices and it's like, well, Mm -hmm. shit, this is not going to be cost effective. This is going to be actually, in fact, reckless potentially or damaging to the future development and growth of a company and like to be successful. And fortunately, you have to like, you have to make those sacrifices. And I think that's a thing that not a lot of small business owners really talk about is the long hours, the sacrifices you have to make in product and out of necessity. It's like, what is the best, what is the most biggest bang for the buck that can reach the most people at the widest variety in the best time? It's, it's, it's hard because a lot of people like, I don't know if you two beat yourselves up over that and like not being able to make a specific need fit because it is a one, a one-off. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. that sucks. Yeah. That I mean, it's, it's been really hard having to do that constant balance of trying to give the best price so people can afford, you know, this great fitting uniform because they need it and they don't have like super giant incomes, you know? So we're trying to give the the lowest price that we can for everybody to afford it with balancing the attributes, you know, that we want to give everybody in the fit because even just the fit is so different from what the manufacturers are making. They can't throw it into their normal line. They have to completely stop their line to do our stuff. And so that costs them money. And so we have to have these large enough orders for it to make sense. And they have to be per style. So if we have a bunch of different styles, well, then that's thousands per style that we have to do at the manufacturers. And so eventually that is our our goal that, you know, just that, that constant daily balance and fighting ourselves over things and me pleading with Karina, like, can we maybe change this a little bit or, you know, so I can get the price down and it's just, it's been nuts, but, um, you know, hopefully we can, um, keep keep producing and, and give the end user what they're needing. Yeah. And that's a big thing. As long as people are happy with it and you're, I also think that, you know, not losing sight of why you did this as well and explaining that like, Hey, we, we have a, we have an investment within the community. Okay. Our loved ones are firefighters. Our uh, friends are firefighters. It's like, yeah, we're going to practice what we preach, but I mean, there's going to be limitations. <laughs> we can't give you a brick of gold. Unfortunately, we'd love to, but that's just like, right. that's just the reality of it. For sure. Yeah. So as far as um, like some of the features and some of the tech specs, um, what, <laughs> What are some standout features? Let's talk about some of the standout features with like the shirts and the pants uh, that you manufacture. Let's talk about what stands out with your stuff rather than somebody else's. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, Well, first of all, our sizing. Our sizing is the biggest thing that stands out because we did go outside of that, um, that regulated sizing that they have in the standard. And so our 
women's uniform actually is built for a woman and it follows the the average contours of a woman and um, taking into consideration different parts like you were talking earlier about the thighs because this is a heavy hiking you know industry and so um, we, you can't follow the normal industry sizing for these things. But we were fortunate enough to get lots of measurements and stuff early on to see the, the changes that we needed to make. And so the sizing is the biggest thing and taking into consideration, you know, the thighs. And like um, for our shirt, we have um, different attributes that allow for movement, um, like with the, your arms to go forward, that's not going to pull tight across your back and even um, lifting your arms over your head. Um, we have different attributes that are going to help with that without pulling your shirt out. And so um, so you can move your arms in all directions and still be able to have the movement um, and range of motion that you need without your shirt pulling on you or getting really tight on you or pulling out of your pants because they're supposed to be tucked in. Um, we do have some really great pockets that are, um, a, an appropriate size and location for a woman. Um, a lot of the other pockets, um, that they've had are just too big and cumbersome that, um, and it, it just, everything gets kind of lost in them. And so we've kind of separated ours in that we have a specific drop pocket, um, behind the chest pocket that we use as well, that, um, your IRPG or your phone can slide in um, just right behind the chest pocket, which um, is really, really helpful to kind of keep stuff separated as you need to maybe access a phone or a map or something, you know, much quicker. You don't have to kind of dig around in a pocket for it. Yeah. Um, and on our pants, um, we have some of the si um, similar type of pockets. We, we do have that drop pocket um, on the pant right behind the cargo pocket, uh, which is like great for the IRPG, maps, phones, something like that for a quick access. And we have um, the pockets are actually in a great location for you to just reach down and be able to reach right into your pocket. And it's not located down on your knee, like a lot of them are these days and have been for a really long time, because it doesn't make sense to have cargo pockets on your knee. Like that's just, you know, you fill them up with a bunch of stuff that you're needing and bending and squatting, like, and Turns it's at your anchor. knee. And yeah, it just bounces around and it just doesn't make sense. So ours is actually up on the thigh where it should be. So you can have um, good access to it. And we do have great articulation um, in our knees for um, range of motion without having that, you know, hot fabric pulling uh, tight across your skin whenever you're needing to hike or bend. And we do have um, a great specific gusset that we've made um, specifically for this um, industry that isn't going to um, pull and, uh, and tear um, as quickly as a different type of gusset. And it's not going to... Um, uh, chafe as well, because, um, your, your thighs are going to be, you know, rubbing, rubbing together and you don't want extra, um, seams and stuff there to, to really affect that and, and hinder that. And again, in the pants, it, it's the sizing and the shaping that we do as well, because a lot of the stuff on the market today is just a really flat, straight fit, kind of like you said, like a box, like they're just wearing a box of fabric. You might and as well so ours be wearing actually, a burlap sack. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and I think most of them feel like they are. And so we we we've added all of this shaping to be able to um to really fit to fit you and work with you instead of against you. Yeah, and that's the thing too, is like putting those features in there to where you're not like constantly chafing. Uh you have the breathability too at the same time. We're like the like the I guess that's a rise. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the rise is the crotch area. Rise sounds better than crotch. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. we're a bunch of knuckle draggers. So, I mean, we got to use common language here, but the rise, the crotch of the uh, pants. I mean, that's like one of the biggest gripes and bitches that I hear for both men and women out there. Yeah. And totally. the, it, is. it is, it is. I mean, to have like a different gusset and now is it the gusset design like itself or yeah. is it like materials and fabrics and the way you sew it to where it's stronger and it doesn't bunch up or ride high or like get caught on something or like when you go to step over that log thing, like we were talking about, like don't fall yeah. on your ass. Right. Like what right. makes that so special? Um, well, just, it's really to the design and the shape of it. Um, we're still using all the same fabrics that need to be used in this. And, um, 
And it's really the design and the placement of where we've put everything. Because be um, and a and lot women, right? of... Pardon? Are there going to be different placements for men and women, I'm assuming? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, it, it, it's not huge difference. Um, obviously, the rise is going to be longer in the men's because they have more stuff to put in there than women do. But, um, but, uh, <laughs> I'm not but just the, the shaping of the gusset is kind of a similar because it's made more for like this type of movement and motion instead of just, um, cause a lot of gussets in, um, like men's pants, it's not necessarily for like hiking or, you know, bending and squatting and all this type of stuff. It's just for, for room. But ours is for room and for movement. Yeah. Functionality, really. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is another thing too. It's like, um, I used to be in like a, the, the tactical industry. Um, that's about as far as I'm going to go with that one. But, uh, <laughs> if, if you've ever worn tactical clothing, uh, like something from, I don't know, like combat pants or something like that, or something from like 511 where it's very purpose driven, right? Mm -hmm. Um, did you draw some inspiration between the, tactical application and the athleticism from like military operator kind of folks and the similarities that they have for, uh, wildland firefighters. Did you incorporate some of those things like, Oh yeah, that's a great idea. And then kind of pick and choose, or did you just have to do all this stuff on your own and come up with it by yourself? Um, well, the, the great thing about apparel design is that everyone's copying everyone at some point. And so there's not a lot of new stuff under the sun with it. And so um, we did, uh, Karina and I studied the um, um, just a lot of different military and ACUs, different hiking, different types of outdoor motorcycle riding, like just just um, studying all of their uniforms and, and how they move and what type of attributes are in their uniforms that allow them to move that way. And then at that point, we kind of picked and choose. And, um, and then I was able to kind of put it all together and design it and make it work. Nice. And that's another thing too, is like trying to take all these things and then get them into the NFPA 1977 <laughs> governing doc doctrine, if you will. It's got to be a pain right. in the ass. Yeah, it, it <laughs> hasn't been awesome or easy. <laughs> totally imagine. But, um, but, but it's been worthwhile. Um, so as far as like future things that go, uh, that are going into Green Buffalo, I mean, where do you guys see yourselves here? Are you getting future developments or anything like that, that you're working on any game changing stuff that you care to share? Um, I mean, I really think that if FSU, the next phase of their project goes through, um, that's what Summer had mentioned that we would be kind of partnering with them on. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe not everybody knows what they're doing, but they've already done one phase of, of they request a grant and basically taking a look at women specifically, fire um, structure and wild band and uniforms in terms of how they fit. And, you know, they've gone and done 3D body scanning, taken a bunch of measurements and, um, just collecting that data to put it all in there and, and basically doing, you know, what, what we were doing as well in terms of surveys and focus groups and just asking questions and asking the end user because that's what it comes down to. So they're compiling all of this information and they have some more, they would like to gather more anthropometric data, which is basically just scanning the body and getting more measurements of women's bodies and in, in different areas. And um, what we would be a part of in this next phase is taking a closer look at that and um, either spinning off of what we currently have or creating something totally different to kind of match up with what this data is coming back with. And, you know, it's really exciting for us because we feel that with our designs, we that's the direction we've gone. We just didn't have the capability of the 3D body scanning. And so being able to work with them and go back to the drawing board and take a look and wherever we can make improvements um, and find deficits in our stuff is, is huge. And so wherever we can make those improvements and build better, again, we're not saying that we are the one and only you, you know, every, we're going to fit everybody. No, it's again, another option. And if we can create this for individuals that don't have anything currently, 
that's really great. And, you know, just for us to be able to get a small part of the market to help them, that's really what, what we're hopeful for. And, and thus far, that's what we've been able to do. And, you know, it's funny. So it's my son um, that's doing his first year in fire, just a season. And I actually sent him with a pair of pants. And he was like looking at me and and I he'll probably listen to this. So I don't want to come on. He's like, oh, looking at me and doesn't want to doesn't want to show up and and have, you know, these pants that mom sent him with, you know. And um it's like, well, you know, they'll issue you some and you see how they fit and everything. And talked to him the other day and he said, Yeah, they gave me got my my shirt, my pants. Okay, awesome. Didn't really say too much else. And then they went out cutting and that evening he talked to us and he said, um, so I wore those pants that you gave me. And they fit so much better and they're way more comfortable. And he's tall and slim. And um, you know, I said, well, I don't want to toot my own horn, but <laughs> you know, and and so it was um <laughs> just, you know, I said, well, give it a try, you know, and and do what you feel most comfortable in. And so that was really a, a great moment too to hear. And and my my 19-year-old, he will definitely let me know if I mess up, if I, you know, anything that I've done wrong or it's inappropriate or whatever, he doesn't like, he will make sure to tell me. So I feel like it was a genuine, um, kind of pat on the back and (laughs) kudos to, to what mom and summer had been doing. And so that was a really great feeling because he is probably one of my biggest critics. And I, I greatly appreciate that from him, but, um, you know, Just hearing that made me uh, feel really good. And, you know, Summer talked about all the design attributes that we did, but the sizing and the design attributes, all of those work together. Mm -hmm. So one wouldn't function the way that it does without the other. And we made sure to be very cognizant of our choices. And um, I can't tell you how many times we put a pack on and summer's our fit model. Um, so she gets to put everything on all of our prototyping is, is, you know, her size because it's the most average size that we're finding for a lot of the women that we're speaking with and tell her, okay, put this pack on. All right. What does this feel like? And, you know, so we really try to be, um, very aware of placement of everything because you do have layers upon layers throughout this garment. And so to really be mindful of how your pack is going to sit on your hips. And are you going to have your pack belt, your regular belt, your waistband, and all of these extra layers to cause points of pressure and, and cause chafing and rubbing and bleeding and all of these horrible things that we're hearing these individuals have. And I'm not saying that you still may not end up with it, but we did try to be very mindful because it is just, it's a very physically taxing job. And at the end of the day, after you've worked 16 hours, who knows where that pack is sitting. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot to be said about that too. I mean, the, the amount of thought and effort that goes into it and the also convenience that the average representation, uh, you have a human living mannequin in your, <laughs> in your company. <laughs> That's really damn convenient. <laughs> but um, everybody, like if it's two things that firefighters in general, doesn't matter if you're wild or structured, two things that firefighters hate is change and the way things are. However, everybody bitches about how their back hurts, yeah. how they've gotten <laughs> chased by their PVE, how their boots suck or some, some little bitch and gripe. Right. And I'm a firm believer that if you're happy and comfortable while doing one of the most uncomfortable jobs, arguably out there, well, you're going to save yourself a lot of bitching in the future. And you're also probably going to save yourself a lot of pain. Right. So, and, and we've had people, right. um, we've had, uh, some, some different customers or like, um, some customers of ours trying to convince their friends that are in wildland to wear our stuff. And they're like, no, I I'm, I'm just going to wear my normal stuff. It's totally fine. And they're like, no, please just try it. So they'll go try it after, you know, they're swearing that they're not going to like it because it's different. And it is, you know, this change that, that they don't really want or didn't know that they needed. And then after they wear it on the line, they come back and like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Like we just didn't know we needed this until we had it. So that's, that's kind of a lot of stuff we're, we're trying to be advocates for as well. Like we know that they don't love change, but Sometimes you need it when you don't realize that you do. Oh, yeah. 
then, you know, <laughs> the infamous graph of, you know, F around and find out. Sometimes there's a point of that intersection where you like find out and then, well, yeah, then you change your ways. So I think that being open-minded and being receptive to change, well, then you obviously have to F around a lot less. And that's only a cost right. at your comfort and your, and your own, like the stupid little cultural, like insecurities or preconceived notions that wildland firefighters have. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. And I encourage everybody to be a little bit more open-minded and try new shit because if you don't, well, how are you going to know? Mm -hmm. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I, I told Summer in the very beginning because she wasn't as familiar with this community. Um, and I said, she'd, she'd say, let's do this. And I said, that sounds like a really great idea, but we can't do that. She'd say, why? I said, well, it's got to be a little bit different, but not too different. And it's got to be, you know, just enough to basically hook them and give it a try but it can be a little bit different, but it needs to look the same, if that makes sense. And she <laughs> look at me and nod her head and kind of roll her eyes. And she said, well, you're not letting me do what I want to do. And I said, well, I know, but we can still incorporate all of these things. Um, we just have to go into it very gingerly and, um, you know, present this. But in the grand scheme of things, really, whenever individuals are wearing these uniforms, I don't really know how many at the end of the day are really thinking about their uniform. You know, there's so much stuff going on. And so that's the goal is you don't have to think about it. And, and a lot of people have told us, well, I don't actually sit and think like, oh, my uniform is so much more comfortable. But at the end of the day, I realized I wasn't tugging on it because again, you're, you're out there doing so many other things and there's so many hazards and you have to be on point all of the time. And so this just needs to be something that just feels like you're just going to go and it's one less thing to worry about. And, and that's the hope and the goal with everything as we move forward. And again, taking that criticism, constructive, constructive criticism and just being able to, to hone in on that because we don't need people singing our praises and saying, Oh my gosh, but that part of it is nice. But again, that's not what it's about. It's about you being more comfortable in the job that you're trying to perform. And, um, you know, living with two individuals that are in fire. Um, I want them thinking about more things, uh, bigger things than like my pants are really riding up and bothering me today or my crotch is hanging between my knees and things like that. No, you need to be paying attention to um, bigger, bigger things than that. Like coming home at night. Yes, exactly. Last thing you exactly. want to be doing is fiddle so, fucking with your pants and, you know, miss something, you know, right, now that that diaper right. happens, because I mean, bringing it back to the whole, uh, the change thing too, and like being uncomfortable, being so used to being uncomfortable. I mean, you've probably mm -hmm. heard, both of you probably heard the phrase, you know, like embrace the suck. You know, yep. it, we have a suffer really? culture that's kind of just ingrained into us and it doesn't have to be like that. And you're to you two are just like leading the charge there, especially in like the PT or the PPE uh, game. It doesn't have to suck all the time. You don't have to embrace right, no. the suck. Make the changes where you can. No. And I, yeah, exactly. I mean, look at, and I will say, look at this amazing job. Not a lot of people love their job. The individuals that I know that are still in fire, they absolutely love their job. And how many people get to say that? And so Really, do you have to embrace the sack on some things? Yeah, I mean, I think in everything, something's going to suck, no matter what industry you're in. But um, let's let it make it suck a little less, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just a, just, a, just a little. That should be our new tagline. <laughs> <laughs> suck a little less. <laughs> make it suck. Empowering your people to suck a little less. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the situation suck a little less. That's for sure. But yeah, yeah, it's just interesting. And I always love having uh, small business owners on the show. They like discuss this because I'm a small business owner too. That's what Anchor Point is. And it's cool to see the different varying perspectives of each one of you and uh, kind of the thought and the, the thoughtfulness and the connectedness to the community that you pour into this. I mean, this is like some of your very, I wouldn't say, uh, yeah, it is, is intimate work. I, these are the people that you care about that you're making this stuff for. Right. So yeah, kudos to you. It's awesome. 
Well, thank you. We appreciate that. It is, it is like a baby, you know, in the beginning we we thought, okay, we've done this thing. We really like it. And now we have to put it out there. Oh gosh, we can't put it out there because then people are going to see, wasn't that why we're doing it? Um, you know, so it's this, it's this weird mindset that we had kind of gotten into, but, um, no matter what, again, at the end of the day, it's, it's not about us. It's about the firefighters. And, um, you know, we've, we've had a lot of bumps along the way and we're working through them as small business owners. Um, and, and it does help to have a business partner, uh, to kind of lean into during those times. Cause it seems like we both freak out at different points in, at, of times. And so we can kind of talk the other one down off the ledge. And so that's always helpful. I don't know if it's always going to be that way, but um, that's, it's, it is nice to, to have. And, um, you know, we are still working through some things and, you know, the manufacturing is the big piece of it because these individuals that we look that we can partner with and we want to establish a partnership with, you know, they're looking at wanting thousands and thousands of units and we hope we get there, but to start out, we just, we can't do that. And we've had, um, lag times and shipping, which hasn't been ideal. And as a consumer myself, you know, I, I feel that and, um, we're doing the very best that we can. And we try to always be transparent with our customers and anybody that we're working with. And, um, you know, just really trying to move forward as organically and successfully as we can, um, and efficiently. (laughs) Right. Well, it's that whole, uh, I guess product triangle, right? You have the product triangle. It's like you got fast, cheap or fast. You have speed, you have affordability and you have quality. Pick two. Right. Yeah. You can't have three. (laughs) And it's totally true. You can't have all three. And so just trying to balance that as best we can, you know, which I think we've done with everything um, in our business so far. Um, Just, you know, from coming up with our, uh, our designs to, um, how we got our name, like lots of different things we've had to just balance the whole time. Oh, it's hard too. I mean, it's, it's like the unspoken thing that every entrepreneur goes through. It's like, like we were talking about earlier. It's like, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do as small business owners. And uh, so much so that when things, I, I call this thing, you're going to, you're going to kick out of this. I call it the fucking Okay. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. (laughs) I like it so far. So you know how things are going like uh, a little bit too easy and like things are not like there's not like a curveball out of left field and it kind of causes anxiety because you're waiting for something to come along and fuck Mm -hmm. it all up. I call that the fucking thing. Yeah. Sometimes I find myself in that. So feel free to take that one with you. But I'm sure you've experienced that. I'm going to start using that. I really like it. You know what I'm talking about though? That anxiety Uh, state. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. We have that often. <laughs> That's we'll put that right there with, um, you know, our marketer is really cute. She had told us, um, I have a, a folder on my desktop and, uh, summer, you probably remember the name cause you were going to make a folder. Um, but it's basically like, there's all of these good things that she keeps in that folder. So on really shitty days, she just goes in there and like pick something that's going to be, you know, make her smile. And um, I feel like on the days where we, it's the fucking is happening, like that would, <laughs> that would be a really good folder to pull up. But um, I really do like that. That's, that's great. We probably will be using that um, more frequently than, than not. <laughs> feel free. Unfortunately, I don't know if that's a good thing to have to use that so frequent, but um, at least there's a good term for it now. Right. I I love it. I, I really, you should coin that. Um, oh, I can't take credit for that one. <laughs> that was actually one of my buddies. Eric. Uh, he, he, he's a, he's a chef. He's a, a, he's been in fine dining. He's done all of it. Right. He's an amazing chef. Right. And I've known him since high school and he actually came up with that. That first person I've heard it from was him. But, nice. uh, yeah, working in a kitchen. I mean, he's all That's constantly <laughs> waiting oh, for that. Okay. Oh, I can imagine. Oh yeah. I mean, granted that clothing manufacturing and PP and dealing with NFPA standards is a lot different than you know being in a kitchen <laughs> or the fire line. But yeah, but it's <laughs> all stressful in it in its own accord. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, I think we can. I I think it'd be fair to say that the manufacturing piece is, um, in a sense 
comparable to fire. Um, just, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, you, you have all these plans in place and the weather can change all of those things. And I think one thing people don't realize for us, anyhow, um, you know, green Buffalo, we come up with the designs and we have a manufacturer that we work with. And so once we send it to the manufacturer, it is out of our hands, out of our control. And, you know, that's the one thing that really does suck is we can't control any of that. And all we can do is say, we apologize for the delay. We appreciate your patience. And, you know, at the end of the day, that sometimes isn't enough. And again, as a consumer, you know, we always look at that standpoint as well. Um, but that's just something that, you know, as we move forward, we are trying to mitigate because it, it's really tough because if we don't have a great partnership with a manufacturer, which each manufacturer we've worked with has been great, but also things happen. And um, once we really get our groove and have those larger numbers, I think we'll really be able to hit those timelines that we want. But, um, you know, at a certain point, things are out of our hands. And that really does, it really does stink um, to have to send those emails. But we do try to make sure that we let everybody know because it falls on us. And um, we just want to be open and upfront with everybody so that they know that something might have happened and we're, we're working on it. We're doing the very best that we can. Well, that's another thing too. It's like, you're not uh, feeding people a line of bullshit to, you know, you're not feeding people a line of bullshit to cover up for things that are outside of your control. And that's like where companies will typically lose me personally is mm-hmm. that the, the lack of transparency or like the obvious white lie that you're like, you know, you're, I can tell you're full of shit. I'll still deal with it, but it kind of like, it, it takes a hit to your reputation, right? Right. It really it does. does. And yeah, it, it really does. And, you know, all we can do is accept full responsibility and look at it as learning must and move forward and, and do something different in the future. So. Oh yeah. There's definitely a such thing as failing forward. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> With any business, I mean, if you don't make a couple of failures, hopefully they're not catastrophic to where you have to fold up shop or anything like that. But right. if you haven't made those like little failures or a succession of them, I mean, I mean, what are you doing? How are you learning? How are you getting better? You have to fail forward in order to improve. Right. And just like exactly. we, we had like our very first prototype, you know, that we did, we thought was going to be spot on and going to be perfect. And we found this local dude, you know, t- to make it for us and just thought it was going to be amazing. And it was horrible. Like <laughs> the guy didn't do what we asked him to. It wasn't even close to the specs that we made, you know, just, and so we went through several rounds of those to, to be able to come up with what we have now, but we could have just thrown in the hat and been like, Oh, this sucked. We're done. You know, but you know, you have to live and learn and, and keep going forward. And so hopefully we can, we can continue doing that. Oh, absolutely. And that transparency thing too, with that, you know, owning that, right. It's not necessarily within your control per se. I mean, yeah, it was, a, it was still a fuck up. You still failed, but you failed forward. Now that's out of your control. Is it a failure? I don't know. You tell me, but from my, my perspective, like looking back at my first episodes and my first like iteration of episodes, those things fucking sucked. They're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're horrible but that's like part of the deal like that's that's how you get better right uh, right yeah i yeah. mean yeah there's a lot to be said but i think that uh wildland firefighters and the people that are close to wildland firefighters and have like a vested interest in it they share a very uh similar resilience right and being an entrepreneur or in a tech startup or any of that stuff it takes resilience it takes determination it takes a lot of you know, hardship to endure. And, uh, I think that a lot of violent firefighters out there that are considering starting a business, I'm not, I'm just like, no, being on a hotshot crew or an engine crew, it's a perfect training regimen for like being an entrepreneur or working in a tech startup or something that's high stress, very demanding, you're going to succeed. So don't sell yourself shorts out there. I mean, look at you two. Yeah. Well, 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 thanks. And uh, I mean, that, that's great advice for everybody, you know, especially, yeah, yeah. it takes, it takes a lot of resilience, lots of long hours, lots of arguing and, uh, you know, and, and figuring out, um, the best way forward. But, um, yeah, that's great advice. Oh, thank you. And then I guess, uh, one question I do have. So green Buffalo, where the hell did you come up with the name? 
questions. I got, I got to know this. I just like, been, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, ask it, ask it, ask it, ask it. Okay. So what's the story behind the name Green Buffalo? I know we just dramatically shifted uh, gears, but. <laughs> I'll let Summer tell you because she loves to tell a story I do. Um, any chance that she gets. So I'll let her share that with you. I do. It's one of my favorite parts of our our, our business. Um, well, when we were first starting out, um, we were getting ready to go to an event, but we didn't have a name yet. And so we're we're really researching because we needed to have business cards and stuff to pass out, you know, at this event. And so we happened upon the first documented wildland fire um, in the States. And it's in a Lewis and Clark journal in 1804. And it states that a mother threw a green buffalo hide over her son to protect him from the approaching wildfire. And after the fire passed, the green buffalo hide was lifted up. And the boy was unharmed and even the grass around him was green and untouched by the fire. And so we just kind of saw that and like, oh my gosh, this like, it's a historical, you know, document. It relates so well to wildland. It makes such a great story. And so we just knew that um, that had to be our name. And in the journal, they spelled it, spelled Buffalo with a W on the end, spelling it phonetically. So we went ahead and kept that to keep the like, to keep the history alive, you know, and, and really be able to tell the story accurately, like it is in the journal. And so so we kept that. Um, we kept that W in there. And if, if you look on our logo, you'll actually see a mirror image of the boy whose life was saved by that green buffalo hide. And so it's it's a really fun thing to be able to once you see it, you can't unsee it. I can't it. unsee it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And so we, we had a really great um, marketing team and graphic design team that we worked with um, from the very beginning that really helped um, make our logo come alive and match the story of what we had. That's so rad. Huh. That's a little piece of history built into your logo and your name. That's kind of, that's, that's pretty cool. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. So as, as far we're, as we're very, that's our baby, our logo is our first baby. You can see it in the logo. And for those folks that want to check it out, you'll see it. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> All right. No, you can't. And it's funny because when they showed it to us, we thought, oh, wow, this is like a buffalo we weren't even thinking of. You know, we were thinking of an entire buffalo profile, all of these things. And we thought, well, that was kind of cool. And then they told us, and neither one of us saw the boy's face. And they told us to take a look. And again, we couldn't unsee it. I, said, I, can't, I can't even see the buffalo anymore. I can't see his face. <laughs> oh, that's wild. That's cool. That's, I like it. I like you. I like you. I like you guys. I do. I really do. <laughs> so <laughs> as far as like getting back into like the, the PPE thing like that. So let's talk about like how we can get a hold of you, where we can find you. Some basic questions for people that are interested in trying your stuff out. So obviously it's www.greenbuffalo.com. Um, do you guys have an Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz? We do. Okay. We do. We have Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, the, the traffic over there, um, we, we haven't had time to put a lot into that. We go in spurts and we're trying to do better, but if we have something exciting coming up, we will definitely let people know that way. Um, you know, we're a party of two and we have a marketer that we contract in when we're doing bigger things. And so we wear a lot of hats and trying to keep up on everything, you know, some things slip. But if you also reach out to us um, on the website, there's an email, hello at greenbuffalo.com. And if there's any questions, um, you can reach out for just general questions, general inquiries. Those get answered by me. And then if you have questions with sizing, those get answered by Summer. And so we just try to keep those a little bit separate from our personal emails. So then we can keep them straight and know who we're responding to. But you can reach us there. You can send us a DM. Um, we try to check those as frequently as possible. 
But really, those are those are the best ways. And, um, you know, if you're passing through Fort Collins and you are interested in trying something on, because we have run into a handful of people that really want to try something on or they purchase it because we are finding a lot of individuals if they don't get sizing help, they order either way too big or way too small because they're used to the way things currently fit. And so, you know, one of our big things is send us some measurements. Summer takes a look, she'll put you in a size and really it's comparable to what you currently are wearing with the sizing like that. We've just added extra room for the activity that's being done in this garment. So Anytime anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out and we're, we're here most of the, most, most days. And our handle on our social media is Green Buffalo LTD in case anyone wants to check it out. There we go. And now as far as the folks that are looking to do this on like a, say a gov card or like a, uh, an agency purchase card, right? Is, do you guys have the ability to do that as well? We do. Okay. And, and we've done several. Yeah. So we do. Okay, so that answers my question. I guess bulk ordering too, if you're allowed to do it for a station or, you know, yeah, you can do bulk ordering as well. Yep, you can. The, the biggest thing right now is um, with the bulk ordering, we are trying to really hone in on our numbers. And like we mentioned with inventory, so there, there may be a little more of a wait time, but we're trying to get more on a schedule to where things are deliverable in the spring and, you know, at the end of the fiscal year, things like that, so that we can rotate and have that inventory be inventory heavy when purchases are being made. Um, and so we, we, we can, we can do anything. We just need a little heads up. <laughs> we may not have it, um, you know, readily available, but definitely able to figure some things out, which we've done. We've done several like that and been able to, to work through them. Yeah. And that's that whole transparency thing that we're talking about. At least you're honest and upfront with people. Like you didn't say that out loud. I mean, Try like, the people will be pissed. Well, it was like, <laughs> it's like, maybe not just maybe just forgetting about the city and like people get pissed me like, well, what the hell? I ordered this like a month ago. Where the heck is it? You know? And the right. reality is, is yeah, it's, and I get it, man. I, I get it with the whole supply chain and the management thing, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to, you know, anticipating your quantities of orders and you have an MOQ minimum order quantity, right? Right. Not a lot of people yeah, know that. It's do. like when I'm ordering stickers for Anchor Point, it's egregiously expensive because I'm only doing runs of like, I don't know, maybe 500 of like one, right. like of all the designs combined, like 500 total. Right. And each one of those are mm -hmm. like broken up in 250 or something like that or 100 and whatever, you know, dramatically rises the cost. So if you could do it all at once, <laughs> yeah, you're not going to go bankrupt. So I, I, I get it. It's, it's hard, but. At least you have the, the the courage to admit it and say it and hold it and mm -hmm. be accountable for it. And plus it's good. So it's worth the wait. It is totally. And and we think so. Right. <laughs> and we launched in 2020 with product, even though we've been a business for eight years working with the NFPA, we actually launched product. We signed a, a contract with our manufacturer, I think the first week in March of 2020. Talk about which is like shit timing. Yeah, right. <laughs> like that's yeah. the worst time in history to have ever launched anything. Especially so talk them. about supply chain issues. Like we've just been dealing with them the second we started. And so things are starting to get better because um, still there's still a lot of disruption in, in manufacturing with that type of stuff. So we're still expanding our manufacturing as much as we can and finding really great partners to be able to work through to have the best timing um, that we can. Nice. Well, it'll get better. So hopefully, hopefully yeah. it does. I know every, a lot of manufacturers, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, whether clothing is especially hard hit, but just consumer goods in general. I mean, this is PPE, this is outside of consumer goods, but just consumer goods in general. I mean, they're still playing catch up. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh yeah. And then, uh, do you only have one retail outlet that you can come out for in Fort Collins and come over and check it out? Yes, right now we were working with um, a distributor, but 
again, keeping up with their needs and our needs. And we were just so excited to get our stuff out there. So we're like, oh yeah, here you go. Um, but then managing that inventory and when they needed to reorder, we were pulling from what our inventory was. And so we had decided to pull back a little bit. And so currently it is, it is just us, but as soon as we, you know, decide to go that route again, we'll make sure that everybody knows that you can purchase it not only through us, but other places as well. Nice. Yeah. The, the scale <laughs> manufacturing comes problems that go, to, go, go with that as well. I mean, that takes a lot. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. But I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to knock it out of the park. So just by talking to you too, it's, it's been awesome. And uh, yeah, well, thanks. I, I really we appreciate that. Really hope that uh, you flourish. I, I honestly do. It's hard to find genuine people like that. Well, well, thank, thank you. you. That we means we a really lot. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah it does. And um, I do just want to say um, thank you to all of the individuals that are on our website. So a lot of people may not know, but those are all individuals that fight fire or have fought fire. And whether it was their rookie year or maybe their 20th season in fire or whatever it may be, um, that that's another thing that I think a lot of individuals don't realize because we we have their support and that means the world to us. And, you know, we, we can't thank them enough. Um, and so that's really huge for us, but for our models to be real life wildland firefighters is pretty epic for us. And that was what we wanted because we were scrambling at the last minute. And when we took some of those images, it was in March of 2020, um, right before everything shut down. And we, it was really weird because we went to this photo shoot and we thought, should we stand next to each other? Can we even give you a hug? Can we tell you thank you? Like it was really, really weird. And so it was this awkward time, but um, just have to say thank you to them. And thanks to our families for all of their support in terms of what they dealt with. You know, I know, I know, I, I know Summer's husband gets it. I, again, it's, it's different perspectives. And so my husband's like, you're in it for the long haul. You can, you can do it, you know? And I know Summer tells her husband six more months, six more months. And you know, we're eight, eight more years down the road and I'll tell him just, just six more months, but um, it's like two more the support of them has been huge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're just, um, we're really thankful because we wouldn't have been able to move forward with with them and, and, you know, individuals like you, and we've met a lot of really great people along the way. And it's just taken a bit to find our community within this community because it wasn't always so easy. And, you know, we, we've said, we didn't do this to be liked by competitors. I mean, to have the, just to be able to be cordial is really nice. And, and I think that we have that with some of them, but, um, at, it, it's really about the individuals. And so to say that we were welcomed in this industry, um, we were not. And again, we weren't coming in here just saying this is this is the way it should be done. It should be done our way. That's not what we were saying at all. We were trying to give an option and trying to help where, where we saw that they needed something. And so um, we're very thankful of the individuals we've met along the way because it's made the embrace the suck much much easier to, to deal with. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, if you have the support of the fire family, you're making a lot of moves and you're far ahead, uh, as you are. I mean, if you can get the support of a very borderline xenophobic, like culture in general, and you can get their adoption and respect that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get. It's also easy. It, to it is. It is. <laughs> both. It works both ways. <laughs> But keep doing what you're doing. I, I I really appreciate both of you being on the show today and kind of giving a little bit of a deep dive into like the not only the business component of Green Buffalo, but also the tech and what your mission is and having that conversation to explain the why, right? I think it's very lost. We want like a lot of people out there just like, oh yeah, I see X, I want that X thing, you know, whatever. It doesn't right. yeah. With wildland firefighters, I, it's 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 different. It's very mm -hmm. different. So I appreciate what you're doing and uh, I hope you really do blow it out of the park here. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, absolutely. And then last but not least, I do know that you have a little bit of fact for uh, the NFPA and the 1977. So 
Let's get into that real quick as a last little uh, conversational fact, because I think this is going to be blowing some people's minds, especially some newer people that didn't know this. So the whole 1977 thing behind the NFPA. Give us some facts. You want to take it, Karina? Okay. Um, First part, at least. <laughs> uh, so I guess, you know, I guess we kind of talked about this earlier, the 1977, a lot of individuals look at that and they think, oh, these standards have been around since the 70s. And that, in fact, is incorrect. And so they started working on this standard in April of 1989. So that's when this was established. And, you know, so it's been around for quite some time and there's been gradual changes, but not significant changes in, in these standards. And so if you really think about it, we've talked about the fit and everything and it being flat. And whenever people talk about being flat, I just think of flat Stanley because it's really what it is. You know, it's just this flat fit for a, a straight individual, you know, just very... I don't know. It's no curves, nothing. And I know a lot of people are built that way. But um, again, with thinking about how much technology has come along that, you know, I think we can do better and we can make more options available. And so, you know, we like Somerset, we're seeing those leaps and bounds in the committee and them wanting to make the changes. And so it's really exciting to see. But yeah, these standards have been around for quite some time. And actually, anybody can um, go online and submit um, complaints or requests to the NFPA committee for wildland. Um, it's just kind of a hard um, system to maneuver. And it took us a long time and we had to have some mentors help us to figure it out. But um, I think that that's a lot of the issue as well as why things were so slow is because people didn't know that they could, they did have a voice and they did have a place to where they could go and say, hey, my uniform is fitting terrible. It's causing chafing. It's causing bleeding. Like there, it, there actually is a place that they can go um, talk about this. And then those um, legally all have to be read during the committee meetings that they have. And every single one of the comments has to be um, talked about and discussed. And so um, that's really kind of how we got started is that we started submitting comments and that they had to read at the meetings. And then we started going to the meetings while they were reading our comments and then doing presentations. And that's really kind of what got us um, started in, in working with the NFPA. But, but there is like everyone does have a voice. If there's something that you're needing, something wrong with any gear that you have, you can reach out to the NFPA committee and, and get it attended to. Hell yeah. So there you go. It, it can change. You got to provide comment. You got to be an active participant in that whole uh, thing of, to drive change. And uh, the 1977 is definitely not a year. It's like a CFR code, you know, it's like legal jargon. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. So, right. uh, yeah, definitely interesting. So, well, uh, yeah, just want to say thank you both again. And uh, last thing on the show, I would just want to see if you, I, I always usually give an opportunity to give shout outs to homies, heroes, mentors. So with that, we're going to be closing the show, but take it away, Summer. Homies, heroes, mentors, who do you got for us? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I, I would say, like Karina said earlier, just um, all of our fit models that we've had, like helping me specifically from my end, have, have been incredible. All the models on our website, um, I would totally mess up their names right now if because uh, just short recall my brain is going to be fried but um but they have been incredible in helping me um with everything that they're needing from the sizing of honestly and like where they put their tampons like on on their like in their pack or in their you know uniform or just just weird or their irpg or if they chew you know just like all of that type of stuff that you don't necessarily think about just the tiny little details that i would pick their brain about and that they were generous enough to give me their time to tell me all of those things. Um, that's, that's been incredible. And, um, I think mystery ranch has been really helpful with us and we partnered with them, um, on, on an event not too long ago and, um, just hearing everything that they're doing and the advocacy that they do as well has been really inspiring. And, um, it's been incredible to, um, to work with them as well. Oh yeah. They're making some moves over there. And, uh, 
Yeah, there's another like little thing. It's like how big is your your pocket purse or your man purse or whatever you want to call right. it. Like some your of these purse, are like right. your purse. It's like this big or it could be like one of the flat ones. It's this a little yeah. shit that matters. Right. Now, Karina, who do you got for us? Uh, well, I guess I kind of said earlier, but um, as Summer was talking, I was thinking I I don't want to disclose their names, but there is one individual that was with the U.S. Forest Service, and we would always agree to disagree. He is now retired, but um, he was very key in a lot of the things that we learned and. Um, always picked up my phone call, always answered my emails, you know, very grateful for that because being able to tie in with those individuals is very important to what we're doing. But then also another individual that when I first met him, he was with Cal Fire. He moved on to IAFF and he's um, doing really great things, but he really took us under his wing and supported everything that we as Green Buffalo and as individuals stand for and what we are looking to do that he really understood our voice in terms of of that exactly and what we were wanting to do instead of dictating and I think that there's a huge difference between wanting to do something and wanting to help and and it being perceived as dictating we're not trying to do that at all and so without his help um and him backing us and supporting us and just being a friendly face in a room of individuals where it's a little intimidating. You know, you get up there, you don't know any of these individuals and you start speaking and telling them this stuff. And it's all stuff that they know, but we also have that background to support what we're presenting. Um, without those individuals, you know, we wouldn't be to the point that we are. And I'm very, very grateful for them and their help. And whether or not we agreed, um, we could always joke. And, you know, having that support meant a lot you know, moving forward for us. That's awesome. It's a loving culture, but it's also a hard one as well. <laughs> but there's also right. something important to be said about that. If someone's it not really disagreeing is. with you or giving you a little bit of shit every once in a while, it probably means that they don't like you. So <laughs> that's what we would tell ourselves, you know, after we stopped crying at the end of the day. Um, no, I'm it's just true. kidding. We were <laughs> but um, no, that that is, you know, again, those individuals didn't have to pick up or respond anytime that I felt like I was bugging the hell out of them. And believe me, I did. Uh, one of them even told me, yeah, I'll take a look at your stuff, but I don't think you'll be back. And I, I said, okay, thanks. There's that brutal honesty. <laughs> right. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I thought, okay, I appreciate that. But um, we're always learning. And Summer and I say we love to learn. So I hope that that never stops because doing what we're doing, um, you know, we're continuously learning things. Oh, yeah. And there's that old adage of the day you start learning or the day that you have learned everything about something or you stop learning about something is probably the day you should probably like stop that activity whatever it is. Right. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Summer, Karina, thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, yeah, I'll point everybody to your direction here in the show notes and make sure everybody gets the word. So thank you for being on the show. I appreciate the hell of it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Brandon. Well, thank you for having us. <laughs> right on guys. Well, take care. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Another episode of the anchor point podcast is in the books with summer and Karina from green Buffalo. I just want to say, uh, yeah, this is awesome. I, I definitely appreciate you guys swinging by and uh, showing the showing us like a little bit of insight into the PPE industry that we wear every day. And uh, yeah, I also want to thank you for uh, changing the game and trying to uh, change the future, not only like from the fit and style and tech kind of uh, perspective, but also from like an NFPA regulation perspective. That takes a lot of work and your efforts will not go unrecognized. So once again, thank you. If anybody wants to find out about more of uh, Green Buffalo, go over to www.greenbuffalo.com. You can check out both men's and women's specific fit. Uh, greens, you can even get yellows. They have different types of uh, like Nomex, they have different types of like the tech safe. They've got, a, yeah, they have a bunch of stuff and it's all very competitively priced. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, one of those things. I mean, if you want to try something new, try it out. And uh, ultimately at the end of the day, you got to make that decision for yourself. So whatever works for you, works for you. And I'm not going to judge. So 
As for the rest of you, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody kind of gears up for the season and like stays sane more or less. Uh, I know it's been slow, but hey, it's not a matter of uh, if the fuels cure out. It's a matter of when. So hopefully we'll get some uh, action and hopefully nobody goes too stir crazy here soon. So stay safe out there. Special shout out to our sponsors. We've got Mystery Ranch. We've got them over there doing the uh, good work with the Backbone series. So if you want to go over there and check out more, go over to www.mysteryranch.com. We've got Hotshot Brewery. It's kick-ass coffee for a kick-ass cause. Go over to www.hotshotbrewing.com and get all of your stuff for uh, a proper warning. (laughs) We also got the ass movement. My buddy Boo's over there. He's spreading the good word about burying your turds. So go over to www.thefirewild.com and check out the ass movement where you can save 10% off your entire order with the code Anchor point ass 10 at checkout. And last but not least, we've got the American Wildfire Experience. Bethany has a kick-ass organization over there, and you should definitely go check it out. And that is all located over at www.wildfireexperience.org. As for those of you, y'all know the drill. Stay safe, stay savage. Peace. <laughs>